City strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I could put some sin and put the horses in to the barn and have to do them now again. Red parking pastures built in my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me. Seeing is plain to see, I'm living my bucolic life. Hello everybody, welcome to our new project. And this time I am going for something extremely uh, bright and extravagant and something just to be very cheerful in the middle of these dark and stormy wintry kind of days here so first i'm going to start with the fabric because that's kind of the driver of this project and i have a dear friend who was traveling in india over the fall and she picked this up for me okay if you can see it's got gold threads running through it um, I actually think it's kind of a synthetic, but it feels like a rayon, okay? It's not silk, um, but it, it feels that drapiness of it. And I actually have a couple pictures that she had sent me of the fabric market where they were dying and selling it. So I'm gonna put those up here so you can see them while I am talking. And that was, that was really nice. I'm really thankful that she thought of me there. And I actually have one other piece of fabric from that trip that I'll probably make something out of in the spring. But with that, I want the fabric itself to be the showpiece of this project. And I only have just over two yards, okay? So knowing how I live, what kinds of things I do and everything, I've decided that what would work, what I could get a lot of use out of, is a very long vest. So I'm gonna start with a pattern and make some slight modifications to fit what I want. And let me tell you what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna start with this Mimi G pattern from Simplicity. And I'm gonna be doing this vest now. Since I only have a little over two yards, my vest length is going to be limited to that because it's basically I need um, out of my total length, I have to divide that in half and that's going to be the length of my uh, vest pieces, which is, you know, about a yard long. It's still long enough to give a nice effect and everything. So I like that. But here's the thing. On the inside of this, this is the inside of it, I've got all of these little loose metallic threads coming out all over the place, okay? So this is going to need to have a backing on it. And I've decided the way that I'm going to handle this is I'm going to underline it. I'm not gonna do a separate lining, but I am gonna underline this fabric, which is gonna give it more body and everything. And um, what I'm going to use to underline it, I also might use to trim it, we'll see, is this um, gold bridal satin that I have. I have, a, I have a drawer of random gold fabrics. I don't know if anyone else has a drawer of random gold fabrics. And I put all of those up next to my turquoise. None of them look quite right, but I like the weight of this, you know, heavy gold bridal satin. And I think that that's gonna go really well with this. Let's see if you can see, there you go. So um, that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing I need to do, clear my table, get the vest pattern pieces cut out. Oh, one other thing. What I noticed is on this vest, we've got extra pockets. It has, well, the vest is basically the jacket without sleeves. It's the same pattern pieces. But she has these little flaps here 
that look like front pockets, but she also has set in the seam side pockets. Because of that, I'm going to omit these front ones. I just don't think that I need that going on at the same time as I already have side pockets. And this fabric is busy enough. I think that could be a little distracting. So let me go ahead, get everything cleared off here and start cutting out those tissue pattern pieces. Okay, so I just wanna give you kind of a bird's eye view here of what I'm dealing with. These are my two main pattern pieces. All right, and they are very long. They would probably come all the way to the floor if I left them this length. Now here's my fabric. I have it folded, you know, with a fold here and selvages over here all the way down and then I folded it roughly in half. So what I have on my table, if you can see here, there's the end there and the other end up here is basically the finish length that I can use for my vest. And so these are both about the same width at this point. So I'm just gonna move one of these over. And this is just to get a rough idea. I'm not actually gonna cut anything out right now, but I wanna show you if I place, and again, these aren't exactly even up here. If I place one of my pattern pieces at what looks like would be a top point, and pull it all the way down, what I wanna see is where it's going to land. And it looks like the very, very edge of the fold is about two inches above. They have this kick pleat in here, okay? So what I am going to be doing, there is a lengthen or shorten here uh, mark. Let me just go ahead and get a pen. I'm going to be making my edge of my pattern piece right about here, which is a couple inches above. That's going to give me enough wiggle room if I need it, you know, just to make sure. I'm not too worried about all the facing pieces and things like that right now because I could do that out of my satin if I wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead, put this fabric aside for a moment and get started modifying my pattern for all the things that I'm going to want to do. So first of all, I'm just going to shorten these, all of the pieces so that um, I have a more manageable length to deal with. So here's the little mark that I made. I'm going to line my grain line up with my grid underneath that I can see. Put my ruler down here and I'm going to draw straight across the grid line underneath here at that point. So I know that this is going to be perfectly flat. Now I can just get my scissors and cut along that line. So setting the top part of that aside, that was, this is my back piece. What I'm now gonna do is put this piece that I cut off on top of my front piece so I can make sure that I am cutting them both the right length. So just to make it all nice, let me go ahead and lay my front piece up and down according to the grid. This should, should go straight across and it does. So at the same point where I cut off my uh, back piece, I'm gonna also cut my front and take it straight across, okay? So now I can cut this one, cut the bottom off of it, and I know that my two pieces are going to match. Now there are also a couple facing pieces, a facing and interfacing that I also need to shorten the length on. Okay, so I have my facing piece, which I'm gonna get out of the way for a second, and my front band piece. This front band is gonna be sewn on, let me scoot this over here, to the front piece. So I'm just gonna match up, so you can match up these notches here, this line, bring it all down. I don't think you can see, but at the very bottom here, where the bottom of this piece is, I'm just making some marks where I need to put the bottom of the other piece, which is right here. I made a couple little marks on either side, so I can also go ahead and draw a line across here and cut this front band off. It's 
once that's done, I'm just going to lay this whole piece back down just to make sure it's good. So if it was sewn on and everything's overlapping, yes, it works out great. Now, this piece is the front facing piece. And this one will go on top of here. Okay, if I lay all of this flat, bring this down to the bottom, I can cut it off so it is equal at the bottom also. And that should be the same amount that I cut off of this piece. So I'm going to go ahead and shorten my facing piece. Okay, so I just kind of roughly labeled what all of these things are. I'm going to fold them up, put them back into the envelope so I don't lose them in case I ever want to make this jacket or vest at a longer length. I've got those handy. Morning, welcome to the next day. And um, slept on it. You know, I got my tissue paper kind of organized last night. I, um, the front of this piece has a dart, a dart which points to an apex. So that of course means that since, you know, I'm 50 something with gravity and everything that I need to lower um, that dart placement because everything on me is of course lowered. So let me go ahead, show you how I'm going to make that simple adjustment. And then I'm going to get started cutting out all of my pattern pieces from my gold satin underlining and my fabulously golden embroidered turquoise fabric. All right, so I have shown this several times before, but you know, it's an oldie but goodie. So we're just going to keep on going. So here is my bodice front. All right. There's going to be a band over here that gets sewed on. I'm not going to change anything with that band because I am keeping this part the same. Okay. So what I need to do is take this whole section and I'm going to lower it by an inch. And so what I need to do first, of course, is to decide what is working and what is working is the armhole area this front area, the waist area is fine. It's just this that's a little bit too high. So I'm going to draw a line that's going to section out what is working from what is not working. And I have this lined up on my table. So my grid line is on top of one of my north and south lines here. And I'm going to draw a line straight across here, separating the armhole from the part that I need to move. Now I am going to be leaving probably from about two inches. I'm going to give myself this wide to keep in place. So I'm going to draw my line from this point over here. Okay. Then I need to draw a line down to below where I need to lower all of this stuff. So if this is the bottom of the dart, I'm going to give myself a couple inches of folding area to mess with. So basically right about here is the point that I need to draw my line to. So I'm just going to draw that straight down. So I have a big upside down letter L here and I'm going to get my scissors and cut those two lines out. I'm going to need a scrap of tissue paper. So I'm going to go ahead and cut one off my tissue paper stash and it's very wrinkly. You know, I'm going to iron this real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. So I have my scotch tape, my piece of tissue paper, my ruler, and that's all I need. So what I'm going to do, because I need to lower this by an inch. If I fold it half that much, I'm going to get that inch because, um, half an inch plus half an inch is one inch. So if you can see, here's my line and I have it sliced to there. If I put my ruler up so it's uh, level with this line, I'm going to tug this little piece down until the bottom of it all the way across is at that one inch level. You know what? I'm going to go to, I mean, I'm going to tug it down actually I changed my mind. I'm going to lower it to the 5 eighths point. That's going to lower my dart by an inch and a quarter because whatever I lower it by, well, it's folded up so it's doubled. So if I lower it by 5 eighths, that's an inch and a quarter. And I think that would be good. 
for today for how I'm feeling. So I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape down here to keep that part folded and a piece of tape over here to keep that folded. And now all I need to do is put all of this stuff back together. So I'm going to put a piece of tape here. Stick my little scrap underneath. And I should have a gap in here that is an inch and a quarter tall. So let me start by just taping this outside edge here on there. And I want to make sure that over on this side it is an inch and a quarter. And it is right there. Okay. So I'm going to put some tape over here. Holding these two together to my scrap. Oh, got a little wrinkle there. Okay. And just to keep things in place, I'll tape it a couple times in the middle. All right. Now my pattern is modified. I'm just going to retrim this side here. That armhole is going to stay where it is. Uh, this is correct as it is. I'll just trim that extra piece out and I'm ready to cut out my pattern. So before I get started cutting this out, I want to point out it's got a beautiful selvage with all the gold threads woven through it. And I might try to use that as a trim somewhere on this, um, this vest. And also I wanted to mention that I have pre-washed this. I actually hand washed it in my sink for about 12 hours. I probably went through about 10 sinkfuls of water just about every hour I would go and change it. And it bled like crazy. Um, I tried hot water, I tried cold water, I tried soapy water, I tried clear water, I tried vinegar water, I tried so many things and it just kept bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. And I wanted to get all of that out before I started working on it. So if you ever have an exotic fabric or something, I highly recommend that you try to make sure that um, it's not overloaded with dye. I don't think the dye was like set and rinsed properly. I mean, it's got a beautiful color, but it needed to have those extra washings and rinsings happen on it. And now I feel very confident with it. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out my pattern. While I'm laying this out, I wanted to point out that it's really important. This is my center back here that I make sure that I have the distance from my grain line over here to the edge, which on my layout is the fold line, the same down at the bottom as on the top, because this is at a slight angle. And in order to make it hang the way the designer intended, those have to be lined up. Okay, so I am ready to get started here. And I just want to point out in this pattern, 8177, there's a lot of stuff going on here. It has the coat, it has these pants with the like super wide high-waisted band and it has like a t-shirt pattern a long sleeve and short sleeve t-shirt pattern so there's a lot there i'll probably be doing other components of that at another time which is fun but getting into the directions what they're going to be wanting you to do is um, right off the bat start working with these two pieces the uh, major pieces and I'm going to be underlining this so I need to kind of set that aside for a moment while I do my underlining. So I am just separating them. I haven't clipped or marked anything yet. After I have these pieces underlined then I will transfer my markings over. But I wanted to show you how I do it on this. This is one of the back pieces. I'm going to be doing the same on my front and I am not going to be making the dart in my front until after I have the piece underlined. I think it'll just add a little more stability because if this dart, this fabric here is fairly, well, it's just not a heavy duty fabric and I would feel more comfortable making that dart with two layers. So that's what I'm going to do, you know? When you're sewing, you can make your own choices. So what I need to do is get one of my 
uh, fashion fabric pieces I'm going to call it and one of my lining pieces and it is satin so there is a right side and a wrong side and I'm going to put wrong sides together put this up on top here and very carefully match all of my cut edges and pin them together okay so I've got them pinned together here and before I start uh, sewing them together. I'm going to go over to my ironing board with a light amount of starch and actually iron them together, you know, trying to avoid my pins so they don't make an imprint. But iron it together uh, just so it can get used to each other. Um, the, it'll give a chance for the little thicknesses of the, of the threads on this side and the other side to kind of sort of meld together. And by starching it lightly, and that it's going to hold together so much better so when I do come to baste around here it'll be a lot smoother so let me go and do that well I have a predicament as soon as I started to lightly iron this and so I lightly sprayed my starch I got my steam on my iron I'm trying to iron it the blue shrunk the heat and the moisture shrunk it and shrunk it pretty dramatically. You can see before I had it pinned so it all matched on the sides. Now the pins are out here, but it pulled in at least a quarter inch all the way around. So I do need to iron it because when I washed it, it, you know, didn't look its best and I needed to make sure that the satin is lined, is ironed. So I think that I am just going to go with it, let it do what the fabric wants to do. And if what it wants to do is shrink in a little bit, that's okay. Because this is going to be an open garment. I'm not, you know, it's not closed. It's not fitting. It's open and drapey. So if it's a little bit narrower, I'm just going to live with it. So I'm going to go ahead, readjust my pins so that nothing is pulling and just use it like this. All right, so usually I would hand baste this on. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna do it by machine. I think that it's gonna hold together well enough for me. So add about a quarter inch in, and I'm going to be re-trimming this later, I think. At this point, I don't know, at this point I might use this extra. Ooh, I just had an idea, okay. Um, but I'm going to be sewing my basting line in a quarter inch in from the blue edge all the way around both of these back pieces. All right, so this is what it looks like. I just ran a row of very long basting stitches around the outside edge. Trying my best, you know, but nothing is straight anymore because it's all shrinking in. I think it has something to do with these gold threads. I'm not sure what that is made out of. I don't know, but it's shrinking. <clears throat> and so when I got down here at the bottom, I wasn't thinking about it and I have a little pucker deal. So I think that before I actually hem this, I'm just gonna trim off everything down here, my stitching and everything, just so I can smooth it all out at that point. But I'm going to leave that there for right now. The other pieces I'm not going to be sewing the stitching along the bottom edge for right now just because why give myself any more grief? But I just wanted to show you, um, basically I have shrunk it down at least a size, maybe two. Who knows at this point, but we'll make it work. So let me go ahead and do the same thing to this other back piece. Okay, so another strategy discussion here. I had been pondering and thinking about doing French seams on the inside just so that if it was visible, you know, it would look pretty. But dealing with what I'm dealing with here, I've decided I'm not going to. So because this stuff, everything is very fray-ish, you know, nothing is behaving properly. Everything is is misbehaving here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm um, not messing with the bottom on this one. I didn't even stitch the bottom together. I'm going to be surging the edges and trimming it down so that the outside edge is going to be this blue. Okay, so I'm just going to surge it so that I trim all of this so I have a nice even line. You know, we have to start somewhere and that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to do that 
Um, this is for both the front and the back pieces. I'm going to go through this whole process. All right, so this is what my edges look like now. I've got my gold surge to it. And look, it's still full because after I surged it, I lightly ironed it and it shrunk again. And here's the thing. Af before I even started cutting this out, I took my big piece of fabric over to the ironing board and lightly ironed the entire thing. Now I had nothing to compare it to because it wasn't pinned to another fabric at the time. Who knows if it shrunk at that point? I don't even know. But I, I you know, I pinned it on, it shrunk some more. I surged it on, it shrunk some more. It's like the shrinky dink of fabric. You know those little things that you used to plastic things you color with a marker, you put them in the oven, they all shrink up. I'm concerned that that's what this is, that every single time it comes in contact with any form of heat, it's going to continue to constrict itself. But at this point, it is what it is. I'm going to try to restrict my ironing to just where it is absolutely necessary. I do think that the satin is going to be a very good thing to have on the inside. But look at the bottom here. I unpicked the um, basting threads that I had on there before. And I've got a lot to um, trim off when I even everything up. So this may end up being a little bit shorter than I originally planned, a little narrower, but we're gonna make it work. All right, so I got my two front pieces somewhat settled. I'm gonna need to try to fit a dart on there. So I'm gonna punch out the dart based on the size I cut it out, knowing full well that the piece that I'm going to be using as fabric is much smaller than this at this point, because that's how we're rolling today. So um, I'm going to be putting wrong side up here and just moving my little pattern over here to this corner. I'm not even caring how the rest of this is not matching up. I'm just gonna deal with this corner right here. So let me grab one of my heat erasable pens. I put them far away for some reason. And go ahead and mark these two circles down here, this circle up here, and I'm also gonna draw the tail end of these little legs. Get my ruler and draw these out the best I can. And, uh, okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and pin these together. The way that I do this, of course, is stick a pin down in my first dot, let it come back up in my second dot, push those together, trying to make very, very sure that I've got two layers of fabric together up here where the top dot is, pinching that so that I have a nice clean line all the way over here. So I can tip this down and I'm gonna put another pin halfway. And when I stitch, well, I will just show you how I stitch, but let me go ahead and get the dart pinned on the other side of my other front piece. Okay, so I am using Singer 15 today. She's a fabulous little machine. And so when I get started with my darts, I start on the outside. I'm just gonna back it up to get it started. Follow that line that I drew. All the way up here. And I'm just going to run it right off the edge. This is my top dot. I'm just going to run it straight off the edge and pull it out. Give myself a tail here about six inches long. Tie a great big loop. Okay, so I got it pinned through my loop straight up to that stitching. Just tighten it up. Pull my pin out and I am set to go to clip that. So let me go, I'm gonna go ahead and sew the dart on the other side. And then I need to press these darts. And I'm gonna be pressing it down. You can tell which way you need to press a dart 
after you sew it together by which way you get a flat seam allowance okay so if you're ever curious like if you look at it this way well it sticks way up and also naturally darts are going to want to fall down but this way it levels out so after i get these sewed i'm going to go to my ironing board press this dart down hope that nothing else goes awry and uh, we'll take it from there i need to press my bust dart and it's you know usually nice if you can press it according to the shape of what needs to go in there so i find the way that it's going to work and i think this way so that i got my bottom here and it's kind of working its way towards the side here is the most accurate curve i can find I'm just going to press this. Yes, I did put a little bit of steam on there. At this point, it is what it is, you know. So now that I've pressed it on the back side, I'm going to flip it over. Make sure everything is good on the front side. It looks good. I want to press it again, but I dare not. So I'm just going to leave it like that. We're going to get started assembling these pieces. Okay, so the first thing the instructions want me to do is put stay stitching around the neck edge. We aren't going to do that because I think between my basting and my serging, it'll take care of what I need there. Plus I have two layers of fabric, so I'm not really worried about my neck edge stretching out of shape at this point. Let me tell you what is concerning to me. The next instruction, this is that front neck band that's going to go along the edge. Um, I don't know if you can see, there's a band that comes down here. I have to fuse interfacing to this. So, this is gonna be my plan. I am going to take the individual pieces uninterfaced over to my ironing board and iron them and try to get the shrinkage out of it now try whatever once i have them individually kind of shrunk down then i'm going to cut out interfacing according to that size and fuse it on then you know we are going with it right now right now it's like an improvisation dance so let me go ahead and get that get these taken off of the paper go to the ironing board see what kind of damage i can do and i will be right back well, I can tell you that this piece here, which is about four inches wide, widthwise shrunk up only about an eighth of an inch, but it shrunk up this direction at least one inch. So definitely this is best is going to be a little bit shorter than I originally planned, but that's okay. So now I'm going to get my uh, fusible interfacing out. And at this point, I am using my very, very lightweight interfacing because I honestly don't even know what else to think. So um, I'm going to be having this interfaced and there's going to be another facing piece behind that, which will be interfaced. I know, I know. So I'm going to have two layers of interfacing and two layers of fabric. So to me, it makes more sense using two lightweight pieces. Um, up against each other. So I'm going to go ahead, cut these out, fuse this on the best I can. So let me tell you how I'm going to do this. I just have one big piece of interfacing roughly cut out the size that both of these are going to fit on. Okay. I'm going to use a press cloth because I'm going to fuse them both on here first, you know, after these are fused on, then I'm going to come back and trim the outside edges. But I just think that I'll get a better result doing it this way first and then cutting them out. All right, so this is what that little band looks like with the interfacing on it. It's just trimmed. Now, of course, on my pattern, there are a couple notches right here. And I am ignoring those entirely because I don't even see the point of it right now. And just going to do the best I can to start matching it up at the top and let the bottom fall wherever it may um, because that just makes sense to me. It's a lot easier to adjust the bottom hem than the top. And this is a very good example of why when I'm sewing, 
I'm, I'm especially on this fabric I'm always going to start at the top and work my way down so like for the side seam start at the top work your way down everything start at the top and work your way down that way if there's any finagling to do all of that stuff that doesn't match will be pushed down here okay so everything at least up here is going to match and work out that is the goal so let me just go ahead and finish pinning this on here and um, then i will be stitching this at 5 8 of an inch and it looks like they're going to have you press the seam allowance towards the band all righty this is coming along not swimmingly but coming along so we are going to putter through this video is about persevering even when things don't look like they're going to work but you know taking it as we go so now what i'm doing is matching up my center back seams again starting at the top working my way down letting the bottom fall wherever it wants to and yes yes i do see these puckers here there are not puckers on the blue side okay that has shrunk obviously so um if I stitch over these and I get a little pucker here on the lining side, that is fine. I'm not going to worry about it as long as everything is good on the blue side. So I'm just going to stitch this down. This is my center back and then press this seam allowance open. Everything here is still at a standard 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I got this seam sewed about halfway down and realized, wait a minute, what am I doing at 5 8? This is my chance to give myself a little extra room. So I am unpicking this that I started to sew and I'm gonna sew it at a quarter inch seam allowance, just barely in here. Having extra layers of fabric, it's gonna make it strong enough. It'll be just on the inside of my serging line, but that's gonna give me you know, like probably about three quarters of an inch extra space that might just take me back up close to the size that I originally cut out. That's my thought right now. So I'm gonna unpick this and then re-sew this just at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so on the instructions at the center back, they're going into more detail on working around this little kick pleat back there, which I obviously am not doing because I cut it off. So I'm just gonna skip all that, but it is there. And now I'm going to be doing this part here where I'm sewing the shoulder seams of the fronts to the backs. And I wanted to show you, this is how wide my center back seam turned out once I pressed it open. Okay, so it looks kind of wonky from the inside, but from the outside, it's not bad. It is fairly smooth from the outside. So we're just making the best of it. I'm gonna go get my fronts pin them up here and starting in the inner part and working my way out because if they don't line up and who knows at this point i can always trim some of that outside off easier than i can do the uh, neckline so that's how i'm going to pin it all right so it's pocket time and i am deciding right here and now not to put in the pockets and i think it would be a disaster because they are in seam pockets. Now this pattern has what looks like pockets out there. Those are not pockets. Those are just those little decorative flaps that give the impression of pockets, but they're not really there. It has side pockets, okay? And I cut them out out of this fabric because I thought that that way if you know, anything is visible when you're putting your hand in and out, the matching fabric will camouflage it. But I think that, um, first of all, you know, the fabric not wanting to stay the same shape, not being lined or interlined, this pocket as I sew it on and then ironing it, wanting to shrink up, all kinds of things can go wrong. And I'm just I just don't want to deal with that. So those are going away. We're skipping that part altogether, and I'm going to go straight over to sewing the side seams. I have very, I have a lot of other videos that show me putting in um, pockets like this and how to understitch them and do the different 
seam allowance sizes and everything and it's not a difficult thing but I am just not going to do that right now because um, I don't I I can see that it will be a problem and why give myself any more grief than is already built into the project at this point so with that I am going to pin my side seams together and I am also going to stitch my side seams with this same smaller seam allowance to try to build some of my my original size back into this project all right so the facings are not on here but I hope you can kind of get a look and see that even though I've had shrinkage issues I've had everything I'm able still to get a nice smooth seam you know just going with the flow of it all here here's these front bands and the length is still going to come far enough down that it'll be you know below rump level and everything but it's not going to be uh, anywhere nearly as long as the image on the pattern but you know we didn't mean that in the first place this is the one thing that i am concerned about of course this is just a dress form you know but it looks like there might be a chance that this armhole is a little bit small. If it is, when I'm sewing on the facing, I can just make that seam a little bit lower underneath the arm. I might do that, might take it down to like three quarters of an inch instead of five eighths, just to give myself a little more room down there. It's not bad, you know, it's not bad. It's just want to make it so it's comfortable. But in general, I think it is coming together well. It's not meant to be completely closed or overlapped or anything. It's meant to be kind of open and breezy. So I don't, it doesn't bother me that this doesn't want to come together. I think that was the intent. So despite it all, so far so good. Um, next, I'm gonna work on the facings. Several facing pieces here. I have back armhole, front armhole, back facing, and then the very long front facing and I am going to do these the same way I did that front band which is take each piece over to my ironing board nice and free and iron it first to let it shrink up and do whatever mischievousness it wants to do now once I have them shrunk then I'm going to put them on a sheet of my interfacing, the same one as before. Just lay them out and with my press cloth on top, probably a piece of parchment paper, um, just to keep everything from being stick free. I'm going to fuse all of these on and then trim them out after they've already been fused on here. That's my whole step-by-step -step process. So I'm just gonna do one at a time, get started with these little guys here and I will be back so this is the back facing piece and I have the interfacing fused onto it so now thinking you know if what I know now I knew then kind of conversation if I had all this to do over again and I knew exactly what this stuff does let me tell you what I would do I would get my fabric washed and everything the way that I did before. Um, but before I cut anything out, I would do a crazy hardcore ironing on it with steam to shrink it up as much as possible. Then I would use this interfacing, this very lightweight interfacing, and cover the entire back, <clears throat> excuse me, cover the entire back of all of the fabric with it because it does give it enough stability, it fuses nicely, it holds all those little loose hairs in from the metallics and everything, makes it more stable. If the fabric was this stable, I wouldn't need to underline it and I could probably put in those pockets. But also with that, the way that the pattern is designed for the pockets, they just have those side pockets just kind of dangling inside. And I think if it's a fabric this fancy and I'm going to all that work, I would line it, not underline it, but a regular lining. And that regular lining would hide those side pockets. And I think that that would look really pretty, but you know, it's too late <clears throat> for all of that now. 
but it's just, you know, a hindsight kind of thing. That's what I would do. And at this point, I am just making the best of it. But I wanted to show you that, um, yeah, the lightweight interfacing at, after I shrink it. So I basically take the piece over and I iron it with a lot of steam several times just to let it shrink up as much as, much as it wants to first. But yeah, that's the way I would do it if I knew then what I know now. Good morning, welcome to the next day. And we're gonna finish this today. All we have to do is get the facings on, deal with that hem level somehow. And that is gonna be it. There's no closures or anything on this, so it shouldn't be that bad. So right now, what I'm gonna be doing is getting the front and back neck facing together and putting it together at the shoulder seams. Again, they have both shrunk, so I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to do the final fit. But at this point, when I'm sewing them, I will start at the inner edge. Like here's the neck. I'll start matching them up here and work my way out. So if something has shrunk, it's the outside edge that will be off. Okay. It's going to be the same thing with the sleeve facings. When I sew them, I will start with the inside edge and then work my way out. You know, you have to start somewhere, so that's where I'm choosing. So let me go ahead and get these shoulder seams pinned, sewed together at 5 8 7 inch, and pressed open. Okay, so here it is. After I sewed them together and pressed them open, I came back and just surged around the outside edge because this stuff frays. I still haven't decided how I'm going to be finishing this on the final uh, garment. But for right now, I just wanted to get that surging on there so nothing was going to be dangling where it shouldn't. So now let me get my vest over here and see if we can match this up. All right, so this is how I'm going to match it up because um, it might not work out perfectly, obviously. I've got it laid down. So this is my center back here. And I know that this is laying nice and flat. This point right here is center back. I really should have marked that before. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, this line here is center back. So with my center back marked, I'm going to start it on the middle. Okay, so I know that it is correct. And I'm just going to stick a little weight on it right now because I think I'm going to have to adjust this. So now what I need to do, keeping this line on my center back, is, I'm just going to do one side at a time here, move it up until this line is in line with the shoulder seam. So keeping that up. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. I'm going to stick a pin way out here just to hold that together out of the way. Making sure this is still on center back. Let's see what we've got going on over here. It, I'm pretty much in line with my shoulder seam there too. So I'm going to stick a pin out here, far from the edge. And also down here, again, far from the edge. I'm going to anchor this in place. All right. Now I'm going to work on coming to this front piece here. All right, I was just going ahead and starting it up here at this corner and waking my way down. And what I found out is the shape of this has changed. Look at that, that's a big issue right there. So options, I could make a dart in the facing, just put it up out of the way, could do that. Or I can open up this seam and make the difference there. So, you know, doing what we can do here. I'm just going to start this corner up here so that it matches somewhat. I'm going to hold that in place and just pin a few coming straight down. Thankfully, a straight line is pretty easy to match up. I'm not worrying about how the levels at the end are at this point. So I changed my mind. I am opening up the shoulder seam. It's small. It's small. What I'm going to do is leave it sewed together um, at like about half an inch down so I can have it somewhat still pulled together here. 
And now at this point where, let's see if I can do this more flat, where I am working to get this seam in, okay, I can just kind of overlap these, these shoulder seams like this to figure out where they need to be. Mm. I'm going to actually need to open it up the whole way. Well, that kills that plan, but you know what? Not a big deal. Let me finish opening this up. Okay. So now I have the back piece here, the front piece laying flat, coming all the way up here. I'm going to open up this down here where the surging is and coming to a point where they're going to meet. So right now, my back piece is still folded. My front piece is not. It's going to be coming all the way over here. My plan right now, nope, I'm not going to trim it yet, is to sew it just like this with the front piece open, the back piece folded so that when I go to turn it, it's going to look like a nice seam and I can bury this. So hopefully this won't become an issue. So when I go to sew it, I have this pretty much on the right cutting edge, which is very nice. I have no idea how the other side is going to turn out, so I can trim it this way. The back is also yeah, fairly close, fairly close to the cutting edge, so I'm going to do the 5 8 inch seam allowance there too. So now I need to go ahead and start this side and I have a feeling I'm going to have to open up this shoulder seam also so I might as well do that now. Nope, nope, I'm not going to. <clears throat> I'm hoping for the best. It might work out. So again, starting over here, I'm going to start this point at the top and just first of all work my way straight down here pinning it. All right, so I have not adjusted the shoulder seam on this side and look, this side is laying flat. Whatever. Whatever. So I can go ahead and just pin it. So I think in general, well no, I do have a little bit of a pucker here. It's not nearly as bad as the other side though. So I think I can just let it be. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead, sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have it on here because when I'm putting it onto a body shape, I think that it'll lay more naturally than flat on my table. So this is the side that I overlapped, that I just took the seam allowance part and overlapped. And I can see that that was a good call on my part. So I'm going to pin it back down where it'll lay fairly flat, um, but I'm going to need to even out these edges here and I'll show you that in a bit. This side that I did not do that. I don't know if you can see but I do have a pucker right here. So since I did the one side I'm going to go ahead unpack, unpick this shoulder seam here of my facing so that I can kind of overlap it the same way I did here. Okay and then it will lay nicer then I'm going to come back and stitch it. I'll show you all that in a minute. First thing is to unpick this and then while it's on the dress form, place it where it needs to be and then take it off. All right, so I've just pulled this off my dress form. It's still pinned and I am just going to sew this little facing by hand. It's not very long. I'm just going to whip stitch it in place so that it's going to stay where it wants to because I just don't feel like manhandling this tiny little piece on my sewing machine right now. It's as easy as that. So I'm going to go ahead just like that. Whoop stitch across both of these sides over here. Okay, so now that I have these kind of overlapped and stitched so it'll be pretty from the outside, I'm going to make some clips so that I will be able to turn this easily and get my understitching done. I don't have a lot of bulk here, so at this point I am not grading these seams, but I am making numerous clips 
especially this back. This back part seemed to be a little bit high and tight. So even though it looks fairly flat across here, I am putting clips across there. Sorry. Sometimes I'm working on things and I'm so busy looking down here that I don't look up at my camera. I don't realize when I'm going off center. That is life. So, okay, so I'm clipping all the way around here and clipping this. Now I'm going to need to understitch this. So I need to put the seam allowance facing towards the band because this part here is all visible. Okay, this is the band part that's going to be visible. The understitching goes on the private side and the private side is the bottom and this facing piece is the bottom. So I am pushing all the seam allowances towards the facing and I'm going to come back and run a row of understitching which is a straight stitch about an eighth of an inch in on this side of this seam all the way around. When you get up to these top corners you're not going to be able to get your sewing machine all the way up into the corner. I usually have to stop right about here, flip everything around. Well, I will actually be looking at it like this. Flip everything around, put it back down, you know, making sure my seam allowances, even around the neck, are pointed that way. And then start again here. You know, if, it, if you don't get stay stitching all the way into the corner, that's not a big deal. And then come all the way around. And I'm going to go do that, and I'll be right back. All right, so this is what my understitching looks like here, this row. I get up to within about an inch of this point, had to stop, start it over here about half an inch in, and it goes all the way around my neckline. So now I can come in, pop out these corners, use my handy dandy rounded chopstick to try to get that corner out. Um, I have to be kind of careful because this fabric, you know, being what it is, I don't want to punch a hole in it. So now I'm going to go over to my ironing board and just fold over the edge here and press it nicely to see what kind of a neckline and cuff, I mean neckline and front. Ah, you see this? Where it looks like it's a little bit off right there? I probably need to trim some bulk, some more bulk out. So I'm going to come in here, it was like right around there, I'm just going to come in here and trim this whole little piece down to about a quarter inch. And let's see if that fixes that little kink. It's not really a big thing, but it would, it would bother me. All right, there you go. And now it's going to lay nice and flat. So sometimes if you see something, especially around a curve, and it looks like it's, it's a little bit kinked in or just not laying right, it's, it's usually bulk. It's usually an issue of trimming out bulk. Up here where all of my seam allowance is and I have a whole lot of fat stuff going on there, if it looks like it's going to really bother me because I got this layer, um, I think I can trim some of this out. Not a whole lot. I don't want it to get close enough that it might want to unravel. Okay, let me go ahead and press all of this and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got it pressed turned under, I just have it kind of pinned where it needs to hold it. And it's looking actually really nice around the neckline. I'm, I am good with this right now. I think I need to do a couple more trims right here. See that? Anyhow, um, I wanted to show you that when you do the understitching, how that pulls that edge around. So here's my stitching line, but it's more on the inside now because of the understitching. So on the outside edge, you don't see any of that stitching there. So that's what makes it really nice. But I need to deal with the inside of this now. And so what I have decided to do is um, I'm going to try, try my best from this point here at where the neckline curves in right here all the way around to this point over here. I'm going to try to do some little blind stitches or invisible stitches or whatever you want to call it, whip stitches that only catch the lining that don't go all the way through just to keep this part of this edge anchored down. 
Um, at first I was thinking that I would come in and turn it under really nicely and everything and try to keep it really tailored. But honestly at this point, especially because my seam allowances are all visible with serging, this isn't going to bother me. Hopefully it won't be visible from the outside. But I want to keep this whole neck facing from wanting to come out of sorts. So, just stick a pin here. From about this point here, I'm just going to, with my needle and thread, uh, make some stitches and again trying my best only to go through the gold part so that I don't have very much visible from out here okay all right so it is now stitched down to just this point I don't believe I really need to do the front opening um, because the hem that I'm going to do is going to keep it tacked in on the bottom I'm not worried that this is going to want to flap open. If it looks like it will, well then I can come back and whip stitch it down after the fact and that's not a big deal. So what I want to do now though um, is go ahead and get my hem situated before I start dealing with that armhole. Alright, so to figure out the length that I want, I'm putting it on my dress form. I got it angled down here towards the floor so you can see what I'm doing because on the inside here I have got all different lengths of things. So what I'm going to do is try to find myself a starting point that I can mark all the way around where everything is even. And usually if I'm doing a dress or a skirt or something I use one of these types of dress markers but it's too tall for that. So I'm kind of improvising and I grabbed an old ruler and I'm just kind of clipping it on here with some clothes pins just to make it extra tall and I'm going to set it down here. Oh, not tall enough. Let me go grab a yardstick to put on here. All right, I just put some masking tape on here and taped my big old yardstick to it. So, and ignore my fuzzy slippers. It's a fuzzy slipper kind of day and we are dealing with it right now. So down here, okay, I need to find the shortest point and mark that on my ruler. Right now it looks like where the inside of this facing is, is the shortest point which is right about here on my ruler. Okay, so just to make life easier, so I don't have to remember that. Get a piece of green tape and I'm going to put a line right there. Okay, so I'm going to take it around the back, make sure there's nothing any shorter than that, and I think we're good. So with that, I'm going to hold it here and at the bottom of my green tape, I'm just going to put a pin sideways through all of the layers, let me get my pins down here, through all of the layers of my vest. Okay, and when I'm done, I'm going to have a nice, hopefully even line all the way around. I tried to make sure that my, my vest is hanging with the neckline right and everything up there. So let me go ahead, finish marking this. I can just turn her as I go so I don't have to move too much and then I will put the vest back up here on my table. All right, so before I pull the pins out, what I'm doing is very, you know, loosely connecting the pins with a line with my pen, my heat erasable pen, and I'm basting it across to hold these layers together so that um, the satin layer and the turquoise layer are going to stay as one when I cut it. So I'm just working my way across, taking big basting stitches. These stitches, I'm going to leave them in, but they're not going to be visible because they're going to be hidden up into the hem when I'm all done with this. So let me finish basting this all the way across here. Now the only thing is the very end, I'm not, I'm making sure I'm not basting this facing closed. I am having this open and basically starting my stitching right here where I have all my layers coming together. So now that I have this thread marked here and my little lines are still kind of visible, I'm just going to come back and about a quarter inch or so below that, just cut straight across the entire bottom of 
my vest and hopefully all of my basting is going to hold everything together at the right level. Okay, so now that that is done, to start my hem out here where the facing is, where this underlining is, I'm turning it over. Fold this over here. I'm turning under the edge, okay? So here's the band, here's the facing. I want all of that understitching and everything to be rolling over, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and pin it here and here. And I'm gonna give myself enough room to make a decent sized little hem. So I'm gonna be sewing straight across here at probably one inch, okay? Because at the, at the seam allowance I give myself here is gonna be the amount of fabric I have to make a hem in the rest of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark where I'm gonna stitch it, just so I can make sure I stay accurate on both sides. So on both sides, I will fold it in like this and sew straight across just like that. So now that I have that stitching line in, I'm gonna come in and trim this at an angle. Cut out this extra bulk here from that seam that was understitched. And now I can turn this point right side out here. Get my handy dandy chopstick just to get that edge to lay down nice and flat there. So that's going to be my front corner, okay? I'll do the same thing on the other side, but what that's going to do is give me a little place to start my hem, okay? So once I have my other side turned, I'm going to pin up at the seam allowances here about an inch and that's going to give me enough a guideline here that I can go ahead to my ironing board and press this whole bottom edge as is. All right, so I have it uh, ironed down here and I think my fabric's finally getting to the point that when I iron it, it's not shrinking anymore. So that's a good thing. There is a point that it stops. So with this edge here pressed, how I'm gonna hem this is just turn it under to basically where my basting line is, pin it down, and just create a hem that way. So I'm just gonna continue one little section at a time, pinning it down like this. Uh, when I am done with this, I need to decide if I am going to stitch it by machine or if I'm going to whip stitch it. And what I'm thinking, is I'm going to whip stitch it. And that is because there is no top stitching anywhere else on here, okay? All the under stitching and everything I've done is invisible. So I think that in order for everything to carry through the same theme, um, whip stitching it again, just to the gold layer so that it's not visible on the outside. Kind of like this, you know, where I have it it's all stitched down in here, but you don't actually see it out here. You know, that's what I'm gonna be doing down here. But once I get it all uh, folded under, then I'm gonna press it again, and then I'm gonna come back and stitch it. Okay, so welcome to another day. And the only thing I still have left to do is deal with this armhole, and there are facings, a front and a back for each one. Um, but to me, it looks like this is just way too small, so I have a feeling that I'm going to be uh, modifying somewhat my facing because I don't, you never want anything underneath here that's really gonna snug in on you, especially if it's a vest, which to me, you know, unless it's summer and it's over a tank top with some, ooh, a tank top with a chiffon skirt type thing with this, ooh, that would be lovely, anyway. Um, lost my train of thought. You don't want it way up close underneath your arm, okay? And because these also shrunk, there's a chance I might have to do something different. But I just wanted to show you, this is why I might drop it. I'll probably try this on first before I do that. But I've got the hem stitched up all the way around. It's just, like I said, it's just whip stitched in and everything. And I think that that's gonna work really well. So if I wasn't using a fabric that was this finicky, this pattern 
would have worked out so much faster. So don't be dissuaded from the pattern because of this. It's just, you know, fabric choices. But sometimes it's good to see what finicky fabric choices are gonna do to you. And it's beautiful, it's just not easy. So let me pull this down, put it on my table, and we'll get started with the armhole. So I just very quickly tried this on. I have like a very thin Under Armour kind of shirt on. And it fit, but it was snug and it was very high up underneath my arm. It wasn't painful, but even if I just did it the way it is, I would have a 5 8 inch seam allowance to expand it. But I think if I had my preference, I would lower it by maybe a little more. So instead of lowering it by a 5 8 inch seam allowance, I think on the bottom I want to go closer to a 1 inch seam allowance. So, um... You know what I'm going to do is go with the flow at this point, try putting my facings together, you know, as indicated, and then if that doesn't work, then I'll come up with a, a different option for enclosing that armhole. So first thing I need to do is sew these together. So I have two backs and two fronts, and before I get them messed up, because they don't even look like the original pattern. Well, I guess they do. I guess they do. They're not actually that bad. So I put a little B down here. Don't know if you can see. Stuck a B at the bottom of both of these. These are my back pieces. So I'm gonna flip them this way. And then I'm going to, I don't have to mark my fronts because obviously if my backs are marked, I know what's what. So I'm going to sew my fronts on here and here for both of these. Add a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press the seam allowance open. Okay, so I got my facing sewed together. I have not surged around the edges because I'm not sure what I'm doing with the edges yet. But um, I want to tell you, I'm back on my Meister. I got my new and improved and more powerful motor in the mail from sewingpartsonline.com last night in the mail. Very excited, put it on, it's working great. I went down in the basement to get some tools to do the connections and everything. And let me know if this has ever happened to you. You're down in the basement, hunting around shelves, looking for parts and things, and you find another sewing machine. I must have put this down there like, 15 years ago, when we first moved here, we went to a lot of auctions, we had a lot of stuff, and it just kind of got thrown in, and we're slowly weeding out the, the basement. But I found this Goodrich B. Cute little machine. So, it's a treadle. It's a shuttle, an oscillating shuttle treadle machine. But I spent, I got totally sidetracked last night. I was gonna finish this project, but instead I spent about four hours at the dinner table with all of my bag of tricks, getting it cleaned up and everything unseized and everything so it would turn. So there you go. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with that. I don't have room for another treadle machine. I have two treadles right now in this house that are usable, another treadle in an extra building that we have in its big cabinet, then there's this machine that obviously needs a cabinet. I don't know what to do with it. So for right now, she's just gonna sit there on top of Belle's cabinet until I figure it out. Anyhow, back to this project. All right, so I have my vest here, right side up, obviously, up here is the shoulder, and I got one of my facing sets, and I'm gonna match up the one that has the letter B is the bottom back. So I'm going to match that up down here, match up the top shoulder, and just see if we come close to making this fit once I stretch it out. So I've got that match down there, this matched up here. Let's pull it open. And you know, that's not that bad. I think everything shrunk uniformly, you know, if that makes any sense. But it looks like I will be able to use this facing. I am um, going to be turning under the edge of it, 
kind of like the bottom hem I've decided so I'm not going to be serging this right now. Um, I think the interfacing that I fused to it's going to keep it from unraveling for the time being so that's okay. Let me go ahead and come over here pin this up. When I get to the bottom I'm going to go ahead and mark my sewing line down here so that I make sure I don't forget. So usually I would be sewing a 5 8 inch seam allowance but instead I want one inch. So I'm just going to draw a little line right there at that one inch spot so that I can um, ease it back up to the 5 8 inch um, as I go around. So once I finish pinning this I'll show you what it looks like. Okay so I have it just folded up here. Here is my one inch line that I was drawing and I'm just going to up here where I'm close to being upright draw the 5 8 inch so that I can guide them together like that. And I'm going to do that on the back side too. And that's just going to give me just a little bit extra at the bottom and I think that that's going to fit just fine. So I'll draw the guideline over here also and I have high hopes that the other armhole is going to fit exactly the same way. If it doesn't I'll let you know. I might have been a little optimistic because this other side the facing did not fit the armhole. It was too small. So what I did is I came in here and I just trimmed some of it out to give myself a, a larger size over here and uh, then I could pin it that way. So you know you do what you do but by trimming out this inner part you know it just a little at a time it gives you the space you need. So let's see what this side looks like. This side is not so bad. This side actually looks like it's going to fit. So out of all four facing pieces only one of them shrunk beyond being able to make it work and that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead mark this the same so I have a one inch seam allowance at the bottom of my armhole and everything else 5 8 and I'm going to go stitch that up. Okay so now that that has been sewn on I'm going to come back with my pinking shears and trim it down all the way around to like a fat quarter inch seam allowance. This should help it to turn a lot more evenly. So now that I have that seam allowance trimmed I'm going to understitch this. So pulling my seam allowance this way towards my facing towards this direction and run a row of stitching right about here on the facing side on top of the seam allowance all the way around both of the armholes. Alright I got my understitching done and I am just carefully turning this and pinning it so that it is at a nice place in that fold. The understitching really really helps to give a nice edge. Um, it rolls all the stitching out of the way. So now I have a facing that looks like this okay where it's a little bit shorter on the bottom than at the top. This is the inside. At first I was going to trim everything so it would all be the same level but I'm not going to worry about it because it's only like a quarter inch difference between the length up here and the length down there. So what I'm going to be doing is turning the outside edge under by about a quarter inch and after I have it all turned under and pinned under like that I will lightly press it and then come back and whip stitch it down. Before I turn it under down here at the bottom I am just going to kind of clip some of this seam allowance out of the way so it does not want to show because it was sticking out a little bit and just tuck everything under. It's going to it's not going to look like a facing. It's going to look more like a, a band but that's okay. It's going to do the job of keeping this armhole under control. So you can kind of see how I have it pinned all the way around here. I'm just going to get my matching thread and needle, whip stitch it all down. Again just stitching it to the gold part trying not to let any of my stitches be visible from the right side. Okay so here she is 
pardon the squeaky, I need to put a little oil on her. I think that it turned out to be a really nice vest. The uh, darts are at a position where I'm comfortable with it, with the modifications. And even though it shrunk everywhere, I still think it's beautiful. So this is the depth of the armhole that I have now, which is a lot more comfortable. This might be the original pattern armhole depth that just I had so much shrinkage. I don't even know at this point. So if you're gonna make it, just double check it yourself before you put the facing on. Um, I think that it looks really nice. I mean, go ahead and try it on. So here we go. Um, it is finished. It, I think it's pretty. I am perplexed because I am not sure how I should style this. In the envelope of the pattern, it has the long pants and a shirt. So um, I don't have long pants on. I got my culottes and boots on again. But um, you know, I'm thinking that something with fabric this fancy, maybe I should get a more I don't know. I need help. Give me some suggestions on how to style this. But anyhow, for the pattern itself, I think it would go together well. Okay, I don't see any real problems with it and everything. And I wasn't able to do the side pockets because you know why. And I omitted the front little flaps because I thought that would just be more um, distracting from the pattern. Hang on. Get, get. So, um, cat. So it went together well. I think that the biggest lesson, the biggest takeaway in this one is if you have a weird fabric or a different fabric or a fabric that, you know, these threads, I didn't know. Um, instead of, I usually just pre-wash, dry, and then go from there. I think that if it's a fabric that is that different from your norm, um, treat it as you would the rest of the way. So yes, I pre-wash and pre-dry, but I did not pre-iron. And I think next time I have something this unusual, I'll take just a little strip and iron it first, just to see what it will do. Because, you know, lesson learned. I obviously don't work with this fabric very often, so, you know, it was a learning experience. But look, it came together well. It was just a matter of figuring out how to deal with it as it was shrinking along the way. So anyhow, hope you liked it. See you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Live in my bucolic life, free of the city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sell and spin. The horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.